So today I wanted to talk to you guys about tea towel aprons. It's a, a great way to um, use your embroidery designs on a super easy project. I, I love making tea towels as gifts, but this is something you can do with the tea towels. I have a big stockpile that I use. Um, all the tea towels you have laying around in your house um, makes it kind of step up a notch. So um, you can do this on any tea towel. Um, you might look at a tea towel and say, well, that doesn't look big enough to make an apron, but it is. Um, it's not going to be, you know, a giant apron, but it's certainly big enough for most people. So um, today I'm going to just do it on a plain white tea towel. So, um, you know, one of these basic cotton tea towels that you probably have in your stash. Um, so we're going to talk about how easy that is to do. So the very first thing you're going to do is you are going to take your tea towel and you're going to wash it and press it. So I throw it in the wash just like I would um, if I was washing my apron after I get sauce on it or oil or, you know, whatever you get on when you're cooking. So wash it, put it in the dryer, don't be fussy with it, you know really just throw it in there so and then I press it really nicely because of course it comes out all wrinkly and weird so this is my washed and pressed tea towel um, then you're gonna take it you're gonna press it in half the long way uh, hot dog style as they say so put a crease in the middle of it um, that's gonna serve two purposes it's gonna help us when we're marking for our straps and also when we're doing our embroidery placement so press it really nicely um, and then open it back up. So I don't have my official crease in here. I've got a little bit of a finger press, but um, you get the idea. So I do this with the um, tag and the, usually there's a little like hanging tab up here. So you're gonna wanna treat this as the top of your apron because you're actually gonna cut off these corners. So you might as well just get rid of this stuff at the same time. So you're gonna have a crease in the middle here, okay? So you're gonna take your pen, let's see if I can find mine. I just have a water soluble, you can use a heat erasable, piece of chalk, a pin, whatever you wanna do, um, but something that's removable. And um, you're gonna have your center line. What you're gonna do is you're gonna measure four inches to the left and four inches to the right of that line and make a mark. So four inches, so four inches, four and four right? Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to measure 10 inches down from the top on either side and you're going to make a mark. So 10 inches, 10 inches. Okay. Right. That's as hard as this gets. So you have a center crease, four inches to one side, four inches to the other and 10 inches down on either side. Now what you're going to do is you are going to fold your uh, tea towel kind of along that. This does not have to be exact. Just make it, you know, you want to make it about as uh, even on both sides. So you're going to fold you're going to fold. It would help if you were doing this on your pressing surface because now what you're going to do is you're going to press a crease into that. So you're just going to iron, you're going to iron um, something to know is that I have the back of my apron facing up and what I mean by the back is just when you look at your hem the the hem is folded here so this is the back of your apron so you folded this towards the back so I'm again I'm gonna do this kind of with a finger press so I don't have to go and um, press this on my iron but when you open that back up you'll see a crease and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna cut about an inch and a quarter away from that crease you just made. So for me, that's about there. All right, so an inch and a quarter away from the crease. Cut her right off. Same thing on the other side. Inch and a quarter. So now you have your, the beginning of your apron shape. So what you're going to do is you're going to, so you have this, now you have this one fold. So this is going to make the casing that our apron straps are going to go through. So you take this, fold it back up, unfold it, 
and then you're going to fold the raw edge in about a quarter, press it, and then you'll fold the whole thing in. I have one Magic of Television that I've done already. So on this side, I folded that quarter inch in, and I folded over and I top stitched. So I just used the edge of my sewing machine and stitched that down. So what that does is it makes a channel for my uh, straps to go through. So speaking of straps, you can do a bunch of things for the straps. You can um, use ribbon. Um, what I did is I made a strap. I cut uh, three three inch strips of fabric and I feel like Julia Child just throwing things. So here is my example. I have my three inch piece of fabric. This is obviously not long enough. Right? I pressed it to the center. I opened it back up and then I pressed to the center of that, folded it, and then stitched down the edge of this. I actually stitched on both sides. I like the way that looks. Um, so then I have a strap. Now this is gonna be a little bit long. I like to make mine long and then once I get it on, then I can um, see how long I need the straps. So I'll get it on, see how what size works for me, um, and then I will just kinda put a knot in the end and cut off the excess. So you don't have to be fussy about this. Um, if you are someone who likes to, to be more precise, um, great for you. I do not have an exact measurement of how long the strap should be. Again, I took three um, width of fabric strips and sewed them together to make one long strip. So if they were 40 inches about, you know, you can, you can do the math there. So you're going to do that. Make your strap. Then you're going to make your casing. So I'm going to finish this other side so I can show you guys how this finishes. Okay, so I've got both sides done now. So I have sewn, folded and sewn both casings. So now we have to put our strap into there. So threading um, straps into casings is sometimes a pain in the behind. Um, a great tip. So if you guys don't have alligator clamps yet, um, that's these guys. So these are great for assembling freestanding lace. That's their purpose. But an amazing tip is to use them for something like this. So what I'm gonna do, take my alligator clamps and they have a little um, pinchy end and I'm going to thread them through my casing and kinda squish it up, right? So now I've got my alligator clamps in my casing and I'm going to take my strap I'm going to clamp the end of the strap pull it right through ta-da that's a ta-da moment for sure so now that's the start of the top of our apron right so now we're going to go around this is going to go around your neck so we need to go down the other side so starting from the bottom on the other side, same thing. Clamp. Pull through. So now you're gonna have to fuss with it a little bit to get that about even. Okay, so that's the whole apron process. So let's get this on so you can see what we just did. Okay, so see if you can see this, but that's the top of the apron, right? These are the casings we made the seam is on the back, our straps. So now, if you wanted to, if you're someone who likes to tie them in the front, you can. Again, you know, those three um, straps are not very, three strips are not very long. So um, 
just so you guys have a sense of how long three width of fabric strips are. That's about how long they are. So not really enough to tie around the front if you like to do that. So we'll just tie it in the back. All right, so that's about as easy as it gets. So now we're going to embroider on our apron. So placement is a, is a big question, right? We don't want the, the embroidery down here unless you want it down there. You know, most people are going to want it kind of about here. Right? You, you don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. So for me, I figured that the top of the embroidery should be at about three inches from the top of my apron. That's for me. The size of the design that I'm going to be working with is about six and a quarter tall by about four and a quarter wide. So it's proportional, should be about this wide when it's done. Um, that is a little bit of, of preference on your end, but again, you don't want it on the belly unless you really want it on the belly. You kind of want it closer to the top um, than you do down here. Uh, of course, you could add a pocket on this apron easily and embroider on that, but I am going to just put a center embroidery using our brand new Punny Kitchen collection um, that just released today that is awesome. We'll show that to you. So that's where I'm going to put that. So what I did, or what I will do, and if you want to wait to put these straps on but until after you embroider, that's probably a great idea. I wanted to show you guys you know, how this works. So if you don't wait, just be careful and make sure you get those out of the way when you're embroidering so that you do not embroider them to the back of your project. Ask me how I know that. We have all done those things uh, once or twice. So um, we still have our crease down the middle here. So that's our center of our apron. Um, and then I'm going to make a mark about three inches down um, from the top. So that's my mark. Now you can do a bunch of different things for placement. I'm gonna use the placement tools on my machine to make sure that this is placed properly. You can print a template on a template sheet um, and, and stick that down and line up that way. So many of our machines have placement tools now. Most of them have a way to see where the ten center top of the design is. So that's what I'm gonna do here once I hoop this. So now the question is, what are we stabilizing with? So the short answer is, and, and we get this question a lot on the perfect stitch, is that there is no absolute correct way to do anything. If you follow the instructions that we suggest, you're going to get a perfect result. That does not mean that's the only way to do something. So you'll see uh, in the Perfect Stitch a lot, you know, OESD will suggest something and someone will comment, okay, well, this is how I do it. And that's fantastic. You know, if you've been embroidering for a long time, you may have, you know, built your own recipe for things. You may know how you like to do it, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody who's brand new. So what we try and do is tell you how you can get the perfect result every time if you follow the instructions. But if you want to do it a different way, that's fine. I think, um, you know, just know that when you're telling someone to do it differently, you know, we're telling them for a reason why we, you know, what we use. So in this case, I actually asked our educators, I said, what would you do in this case? Because what I would do and what they would do might be different. And what I learned, I actually learned some really great information. So if you, we kind of have a rule of thumb that if you wear it, you don't want to tear it. This is a little bit of an exception to the rule because you are wearing it, but it's not a stretchy sweater, right? It's not a, a it's not like this fleece where it's going to stretch and move. The tea towel is pretty stable. So we're actually going to use a tearaway. We're going to use a sticky tearaway. So we have two sticky tearaway options um, that I'm going to talk about today. So we have stable stick, stable stick. And I always put my instructions in my tube so I don't lose them. And we have Ultra Clean and Tear Plus. So I said, I actually talked to my friend Tamara and I said, why would I use, she suggested Ultra Clean and Tear Plus over Stable Stick. And she gave me a great answer. So this is going to be tricky for you guys to see. I'm going to do my best. I did an experiment because I like to do experiments and I never just take anything for face value. I want to see the why. So she said to me that if you use Ultra Clean and Tear Plus, the plus is sticky. 
When you launder your item, which you're going to be doing in this case, the more you launder it, the more those tearaway fibers in the back will disappear. Right? This is not a water soluble, but it is something that will break down over time with washing. The stable stick, it stays, you know, it tears away super nicely. It's very crisp, but if, with laundering, that doesn't change. So if you don't tear it away, it's hanging out for the most part. So I actually did an example. I stitched the two, the same design two times and threw it in the wash because I needed to see it for myself. So the, the Ultra Clean and Tear Plus example, the, the fibers are, are real soft and they're starting to sort of fall apart. And the stable stick is, they're crisp. Again, it, it's easy to tear away, but you have to go in and take those away. They're never gonna wash out on their own. So in this case, we're going to use the Ultra Clean and Tear Plus. So that's a long answer uh, for a, a simple question, but it's never, never as simple as we think. So I am going to hoop my stabilizer. It would help if I had a hoop. So let's get one. I use uh, uh, 3M hooks to keep track of all of my hoops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of my Ultra Clean and Tear Plus. Let's double check. Yep, this is Ultra Clean and Tear Plus. My very scientific method of whacking off a piece that's as big as my hoop. So Ultra Clean and Tear Plus is a, a pressure sensitive adhesive. So one side is shiny, Kind of tough for you guys to see that. And one side is dull and papery. We're going to hoop this with the shiny side up. Just as a, as a tip, what I do when I, when I hoop something like that is I will always start, I'll put my hoop in on the corner with the little... Uh, with the uh, screw because if I start on that corner it's easier for me to walk away walk my hoop in around the rest of the side because it's smooth around the whole rest it was you know there's a seam down there so sometimes you know if you start with that corner it helps a lot so now we've got my paper side up I'm gonna take a pin let's see I do have a pin and I'm gonna lightly score the paper. You don't want to go all the way through. So I'm just going to score around the outside and across the middle. And then I'm going to take my pin and start the paper tearing. And then you can tear the paper away. So now this is sticky. So now we have our apron. So we still have that crease. So I'm going to fold this right sides together on that crease. And I'm going to lay it center my hoop. Tough for you guys to see, but it's just center, ballpark, because I'm going to use the placement tools. I'm going to press that down. I'm going to unfold. And we're stuck. So now I'm going to embroider right here using placement on my machine and I will be back uh, as soon as we finish with this. Okay, we did it. So uh, we have embroidered our um, designs on a tea towel. Um, I have two of them here actually. Um, these uh, again are from the brand new Scissor Tail Stitches uh, collection Punny Kitchen. You can find them uh, at your local dealer or at scissortailstitches.com. So we have Simmer Down. This is my jam. So I think these are fantastic. Great for anybody, men, women, you know, uh, they, they are appropriate for everyone. So I have embroidered this one. I just wanted to show you quickly how to uh, take it off out of the hoop, take the stabilizer off. You can do a couple things. I'm just going to pull it right out of the hoop. 
And then something that I learned um, from our educators is when you're removing stabilizer, you always want to tear, you know, it's our nature to tear it up and away. But what that can do is pull the stitches, um, which you don't want to do for sure. So what you want to try and do is pull away from your design. So you're going to support your design with your finger and kind of pull away from the design instead of up and back. So just pull away as much as you can. And then remember when you launder this, because these fibers will break down a little bit um, in your Ultra Clean and Tear Plus, you don't have to worry about getting every little bit out. As you launder it, they're going to soften up and kind of dissolve a bit. Um, again, they're not a water soluble. They're not going to disappear totally, but they're just going to break down as you wash. So we're just going to tear this away. I'll do a better job when it's all done. And we have our finished tea towel apron. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Thanks so much.